Joining me now here on the MMA Report, a man's going to be fighting on UFC Fight Pass on April the 24th. It's Darren Cruikshank. Darren, man, I appreciate time back fighting in the United States. I got, yeah, Obviously, that's got to be a big plus of this. You don't got to get on that plane and fly 13 hours. Yeah, I mean, you know what? Ryzen pays me uh, really well, so that trip is always welcomed. Um, but I'm fighting locally in, uh, you know, basically – in Michigan, like basically maybe 10 minutes from where I grew up. So that's kind of cool. All my friends and family get to go and, uh, and watch me. And I really like, uh, having, you know, my team there because especially the up and coming guys, they get to see how I actually prepare mentally, physically, the weight cut, everything. So it's like a learning experience for all my guys too. So, uh, yeah, I really like it. I saw you had uh, your Instagram, which, by the way, anybody follows you on Instagram will see a lot about uh, your shooting adventures are out there as you uh, let everyone know what's going on there. But uh, there was one where you were – it's it's a picture of you you know, coaching one of the guys in your gym, and, and you talked about kind of passing along your knowledge uh, you know, to the, to the to younger fighters. Is there – what what's how is the view of a, of a young fighter now as in comparison to when you were in that position so for me uh there was a you know mma i don't know i don't even know when i started like 10 years ago or something mma in michigan it wasn't sanctioned when i was when i was up and coming especially as an amateur so all my amateur fights none of them were sanctioned and it was basically the wild west like there was no sanctioning body Promoters were putting on shows, uh, with, you know, where you didn't have to have medical checks. There was, Hey, you want to fight? Yeah, let's do it. This was like the day before that night. Uh, guys were fighting, uh, multiple times in one night. Um, they would literally guys would get knocked out. Promoter would go up to them like, Hey, you want another chance that a win? You want to fight tonight? We had a, somebody fall out and then boom, those guys that just got knocked out. We're going back in the cage and fighting again. It's crazy. So, uh, I, that's, that's when I grew up in, uh, mixed martial arts in, in Michigan. Um, you know, now since then the way more medical, like, you know, there's a commissioning body. It's safer for everybody. Um, and uh, I kind of helped start that. So that's cool. Uh, I wasn't like the first, you know, like there's a lot of guys, uh, in the MMA world in Michigan that, uh, that were before me that helped pave the way. Um, so I would probably say I'm like in the middle of it, but, uh, you know, are, are you, do you get more nervous when one of your, you know, one of the guys you're coaching is fighting in comparison to when you're fighting? Oh, a hundred percent. Like, you know, it's, it's one thing I believe in all my skills, you know, like, uh, uh, the nerves are there, you know, when you get to the venue and you hear the crowd, it's like, oh man, dang, I am fighting again. And then, you know, just before you sign the contract, you're looking guys up and you're like, oh man, do I feel like fighting again? Like, you know, and that's, that's kind of where I get my nerves, those two little spots. But other than that, they go away real fast. Cause, um, I guess experience or just learning how to be relaxed. Um, but as far as getting nerves when my other guys fight, you know, I want to see these guys succeed. I, I invest my time and knowledge in these guys and I want to see them successful. And my ultimate goal, um, is to make them better than I was, you know, that's, that's the, the, I believe the true meaning of being a coach or a mentor, uh, you know, like the idea is I want to teach these guys from my successes, but then also the mistakes that I've made you know, in my career. So if, if I can pass those along and then make an even better fighter, you know, ultimately that's, that's the goal for, in my eyes. Um, and that'll make the human race stronger. <laughs> did, did you want to be a coach or is this just something that kind of just came about? You know what? I've always been a, uh, in a leadership role, role, uh, throughout my whole entire, I guess, career uh as far as like uh athletic ability, athletic career um i was a captain uh for three years in my high school wrestling program i was a captain uh for two years at olivet for two years at mesquite community college like everywhere i've gone i just i don't know like you have leaders and then you have uh you got guys that that are able to lead naturally Right. You have those type of people. Some people don't do that. Some people are just quiet. They, they stick to themselves and they do their own thing where like, uh, I don't know. I just, I pick up on leading people, um, 
easy. I don't know. I, I just always been one of those types of people. So, um, I've always had like a following that, uh, I, I one want to be successful and I try to go after what I need to do to be successful, but then also other people, um, that might not have such a great idea on how to do it. They, they tag along. I bring them with me. I take people under my wing and, uh, you know, I'm not always right in everything that I do. And I acknowledge that, you know, that's like how you get better is knowing that you don't know everything and, and searching and finding the people that know stuff that you don't know, and then learning from them. Um, and that's, you know, that's, that's what I try to live by. And of course this matchup here, you look at it on paper, it's that prospect, you know, Chris is three and one, of course you're a vet of, of this sport. Uh, I guess, you know, outside looking, you just say, Hey man, this guy's Chris is trying to make a name off you. Uh, and I'm, I know that's, uh, you know, that's nothing new to you. I mean, you, you've dealt with this throughout your career. Uh, is yeah. that, is that kind of motivate you in, in a way to sit there and say, man, this guy thinks he's going to make a name off me and nah, not so fast, my friend. So here's the thing. Um, he's from a, a, a very reputable gym. You know, he trains with a lot of studs. Um, and I'm sure they, they go real hard in the gym and stuff like that. But, um, no one's walked through me. Like, <laughs> I, th I believe I'm one of the best strikers in the world. You know, I, I don't always, um, you know, get the W. I make mistakes and stuff like that. But I'm a dangerous person. I'm a very dangerous person, especially on the feet. And uh, if you think you're just going to walk through me, I mean, that's uh, uh, that's probably going to be your downfall. You know, so uh, I respect everybody's uh, ability. And, uh, and you know, you have to be cautious but confident kind of thing. Um, if you if your head blows up, you know, like you're probably going to get run into something. So, um, you know, I expect a fight. The, he doesn't have a lot of experience, but – He's athletic, and the reason why I think it's going to be a fight, at least for a little bit, is because is he hasn't been hit yet. He hasn't been hit. Um, he hasn't, you know, and it's always different standing in front of me. Like, not a lot of people can mimic, you know, my, I guess, my style or my way of fighting, um, especially in the gym, stuff like that. Like, it's always a different ball game when you're in front of me. So, um, it's going to be a fight. It'd be great for the fans. I'm not looking past him. Uh, he, I have to stay hungry just like, uh, just like everybody else. And, uh, so it's a local fight to me, but it's the next fight in your career is always your biggest fight, always your most important fight. And that's what I see this as my most important fight, because this will set up the rest of everything else. You know, and this is getting the ball rolling. Um, I was just on a four fight win streak. Uh, I took a, I actually thought I broke my hand in my last fight. And that's kind of why I went for that takedown in the last minute of that first round. Um, and I made a bad mistake. And since then I have really concentrated on, on, uh, fixing those mistakes and, uh, you know, let's get another fight going. Is it, is that the type of fight that's tough to get over because you just realize like, man, it's just that one mistake. You know what? <sighs> I don't dwell on anything, you know, if, if, I mean, it's been like, I don't know, since new years, if I was still thinking about that, like life would be miserable. Right. Like, I mean, I can't, like, I thought about it for, I basically give myself 24 hours, like any mishaps or anything like that. You get 24 hours, you can like be down on yourself. Um, but then after that fucking brush it off, pick myself up, go have some fun, uh, enjoy life, get ready for the next fight. And, uh, and, uh, you know, work on things that I can work on, get better at everything, keep everything else sharp. Yeah. Yeah. Based on your IG stories, it looked like you and Cody were having a good time in Japan that night. Oh yeah. I mean, I would, I, I ultimately, I thought I had an awesome performance up until my downfall, you know, like, uh, beat him up, beat him on my feet. I didn't take any shots. Um, it was like I could see in the future. He was throwing round kicks at me, and I was going under him. I mean, this is, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. It's a good experience. I uh, put on a great show for the fans, especially for the Japanese fans. They love me. Uh, I love the Japanese fans, and I can't wait to fight for them again. I, I did see in another interview you did. It uh, looks like July 16th uh, is going to be that, that next fight in, in Ryzen. So nothing's in stone. Nothing's, nothing's in stone. But. Um, that's what I'm aiming towards. That's kind of what I'm putting out there as far as what I want. Um, now 
if I get in a tournament or, or if I'm on that show, awesome. But nothing, uh, nothing will be set until after this next fight. Yeah. Yeah. You got you to gotta get through the first one before you take that next step. <laughs> exactly. Uh, final thing. And, you know, this is his por- fourth pro fight, Chris Beanie. And mm-hmm. obviously the way you look at the fight game is going to be completely different than the way he looks at it. Because, well, this is only his fifth professional fight. Can right. you remember what your mindset was in your fifth professional fight? Dude, I had no clue what was going on. I had no clue. I do. <laughs> I don't know what he's thinking. I mean, I fought. Uh, I fought some good guys pretty on. I mean, uh, uh, Bobby Green for one. I fought Bobby Green in the King of the Cage, and I was way too green to be fighting Bobby Green. I mean, that's kind of like a riddle, but. Like for real, like I probably shouldn't have had that fight. I pr- I shouldn't have fought uh, uh uh what's his name from um uh I think he's Puerto Rican. I don't even know. Um, but he he uh it was like a TKO in Michigan. Um, I was way too green for that fight too. Like uh, I should have slowed my roll as I was coming up, but I was like hungry and ready and. I thought I could take on the world. And that's kind of where I see this guy too. You know, I mean, yeah, he could, he could get lucky. He could could maybe like the next, whatever, John Jones or whatever, but, uh, we will see, (laughs) you know, like you don't want to toot your own horn and, uh, uh, you definitely don't want to put yourself on a pedestal, especially being that young. Cause when you get knocked off, it's hard to climb back up, you know? And, uh, that's kind of what I've learned. And that's where it's going, baby. (laughs) Man, I, just, I just pulled up your record. Bobby Green fight was nearly nine years ago. Yeah, it's crazy. And that was a battle. And it was a great fight. And I thought I won the first, I think it was the first, second round, right? Or whatever, yeah. towards the first, right? I was exhausted. And what I learned from that fight, never, ever take a fight at high altitude. Me and Bobby Green would have a better fight, uh, would have gone last longer, more blows. Um, if it wasn't, it was in like Mexico or something, way up in the, it was like, 8,000 feet or something. And from that fight on, before someone asked me to fight, I ask where it's at. And then I say, no, because it's high altitude. And it's not worth fighting in a high altitude fight because you can train as much as you want and get in the best shape. You're there for a week and you are, it's like you picked up smoking. You didn't train your entire life. It's crazy how it affects and it's just not worth it. It's not worth it at all. Yeah, that's uh, and the other fight you were talking about was Luis Palomino. It was two fights after yes, that. Yes, yes, yes. And yeah, I mean, dude, they, dude's dangerous. Both those guys are super dangerous. UFC level guys, and I fought them before I made it to the UFC. Um, and again, if I could go back, you know, I'd be like, hey, calm down, take some other fights, slow your roll a little, right, and fight those guys when you're making real money. Yeah, that's there's a big difference between regional pay and and UFC type pay. There's a big difference. Yes, <laughs> that, that's the one thing I think people just don't understand how big of a difference that is. Yeah, no, it, it's a huge difference. It is, but uh, you got this fight here coming up on April the twenty fourth, Warrior Wednesday number two there in Michigan. Darren, as always, appreciate the time. Of course, let me know they can follow you on social media. Of course, the sponsors that are helping you out. Yeah, so I actually want to bring up one more thing. So if you follow my Instagram. I like to post funny videos, right? Um, and I I uh, made a video like years ago when I was in Japan about walking into a, a puppy store, right? And making and like basically cracking a joke about how, uh, you know, there's Asian cultures that eat puppies or eat dogs, right? And it was purely just a joke. I have recently had probably about 400 death threats from it. Um, actually, the guy that's promoting uh, this is his name's Nam Fam. Yeah, I'm sure you guys know him. Um, this isn't like I, I've gotten a bunch of like hate, hate messages and stuff like saying that I'm a racist. OK, I am not. A, there's real racism out there. Me making a joke about a certain, uh, you know, there are so many comedians out there that make jo- that make a living on 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 racial jokes. And it's funny. Right. You You got to laugh at that stuff like. The people that, um, I mean, if you know who I am and you've really met me, I am one of the nicest, loving people. Doesn't matter your culture or whatever it is, right? Uh, they have flipped this around and they're playing the, uh, the uh, like, I'm a victim. Like, the damn fam has been blowing this up and basically calling me a racist. 
uh, an Asian racist, right? I love, dude, I fight in Japan. I go there all the time. Like the Japanese people love me. I love fighting for them. I have respect for everybody, right? This was literally just a joke. Now, if you don't think like the people that are calling me out on this stuff, if they've never laughed at a at a uh, stereotype uh, joke, then and then okay, they're like the best people on the world or whatever, right? But 99 percent of people have laughed at some kind of racial joke, right? Yes, you, like I don't preach racism. Racism is evil. I don't condone it, and it really shouldn't have a place in this world. I have never judged anybody. Uh, made a, a made a decision on anybody because of their race, right? Um, and it's really just bullshit that they are throwing this at me. Like I said, if you know me personally, I am one. Of, I will bend over backwards. I w- I don't know you. I will ref your fight. I will judge you. I will uh, I will um, uh, coach you in a fight that I've never been before. I've never even met you before. Like I've been to so many MMA fights and helped out so many martial artists, especially in the Michigan area. Um, and it's it's crazy. And so I did some research. The people that are sending me all this hate mail and stuff like that, right, aren't even from Japan. They're American uh, Asian people, right? And basically, they all live in California and they voted for Hillary Clinton. They are making up all this stuff about me. And, uh, and, and it really, it's watering down what real racism is, right? If they, if, they, if they name me a racist, I am one of the nicest people in the world. And, uh, one, I got called a white supremacist in one of the messages. I got to show you these messages. It's hilarious. Um, I've been studying Judaism for four years now. And I, a uh, year and a half ago, I converted to Judaism. So how am I a white supremacist? I just got married to uh, a Jewish, uh, my wife, Malka Berlin. She's a, she's a practicing Jew for her whole life, right? I mean, they, like what they, they see this uh, and they just put a stamp on it and then they go after you. It's crazy. It's crazy. And it's unfortunate because, like I said, they're just throwing that word out there and that's a real word and that means a lot. And, uh, for what I've done to a lot of, like what I've uh, helped a lot of people with it, and I don't try to boast about anything like that. I take guys under my wing. I don't say anything about it. Right. And for them to, uh, to come at me with that and basically harass me and, uh, and go after, uh, basically threatening my life. Like I got, I got people saying that they want to show up to the gym and, uh, they want me to teach them how to uh, move and dodge bullets like like Neo from the Matrix. I took that as this guy's going to come to the gym and shoot at me. I will fuck you up, dude. I do three guns. Like I practice shooting all the time. Like, dude, this is stupid. This is all over a stupid, funny joke that, well, I thought it was funny. I apologize if you guys took it in a different way, but <laughs> I can't believe where this is going. So as a, for you personally, are you concerned for the people in your gym that there might be someone who tries that maybe tries to come after you and, you know, someone else gets injured? So like, I guess internet bullying and stuff like that, uh, has become like out of hand, right. Out of hand. And, and, uh, in this culture these days, like these kids, are taking things so serious. And then, um, you know, I guess somebody, somebody could potentially come to the, come and like, uh, get crazy. Right. But I don't invite it. And, uh, I could definitely tell you, I am always ready for it. So yeah. and I know anyone who Googles your, Googles your name right now, it, it popped, the story pops up. Right. Yeah. It's crazy. This is, this is fake. This is fake. Right. Like, Whatever. I mean, if if there's so many people out there that are just so perfect that they've never laughed at a stereotype, um, which I don't think there is, but I don't know what to say. It's crazy. Nam fam, would you ever like to make a catch weight and fight me? Because I would love that. Do you think that could ever happen? I don't I would love to fight him. I mean. He's like a punch drunk old dude that I'll probably just knock out. 
I mean, in today's world, how do you, I mean, obviously you can go on, you can do multiple interviews and and give your side of this equation, but how how do you, it's on the internet. It lives forever. So once somebody has an idea of you, it's especially like people that are closed minded, it's really hard to change that idea. Right. So like people that know me will fight for me. Everybody that knows me personally will go to battle for me. Right. Because that's just who I am. But people that have this, that, you know, they get this idea of, Hey, you know, I want to be righteous and I'm going to pick a side. Right. And no matter what it is, I'm going to stick to it. So there's, there's people out there that'll stick to it. And, uh, you know, it sucks, I guess, but, um, that's the way the world is right now. So it's unfortunate. I actually hit up uh, cause I was real concerned. I'm like, man, did I really do something wrong? Like I didn't think that, yeah. I mean, cultures eat dog, you know, like certain cultures eat dog. Like, that's funny. If I was in a place where they ate dog, guess what? I would probably try it, <laughs> you know, cause that's like what they do. Um, being able to laugh about it is, uh, it's whatever, but for people to, uh, call me a racist about it, like, that's crazy because that's like I said, we've already gone through it. You know, that's uh, that's pure evil. And uh, I don't I have dogs. Aries, what are you doing, buddy? Right. Like it's a joke. That's all it is. That's all it was meant to be. And if you're too soft and not laugh or whatever. <laughs> oh, I would. Oh, yeah. So I hit up some of my some of my good friends that were that I met in Japan at all the shows, like fans, but that are now friends. And they, like they uh, we go out to breakfast. They come to my like they hang out after the weigh ins or like, dude, we go shopping during the week. Like uh, Japanese Japanese guys that literally are the coolest people in the world. Right. Um, I asked them like what they thought this was. And they're like, dude, you got or not like I mean, they're speaking like Japanese, but like an English version, they're like, basically like you're, you're okay. Nobody here hates you. Right. Like that. I'm like, thank God, <laughs> you know, like, cause they know who I am. I hang out basically every fight. Uh, uh, some of the same fans show up to the thing. We literally go shopping and shit. It's fucking awesome. Um, but it's, uh, it, it's crazy that it's just a certain amount of certain few people that have blown this up way out of proportion. Mm-hmm. I guess if you don't get in that lightweight term at rising 16, you versus damn fam. Sounds good. I think it, what weight is he? I think he's a 45 pounder. Yeah. He's 45, 45, but I think he might've been recently fighting at 55. Awesome. I don't want to have to do a catch weight. I'll be your huckleberry. Oh, uh, we'll have to see, uh, but I do appreciate you giving your side of the story. I know that story. Yeah, um, you know, I haven't really talked uh, about it. Actually, I, I haven't talked about it uh, socially at all because um, it's a big topic, right? And and if you're going to put a spotlight on it, it needs to be both sides. It needs to be both sides. And uh, unfortunately, it's only been one side. And like I said, I've had crazy death threats. I've been called a white supremacist, a, a honky. I've been told that uh, my parents are brother and sister. Like, that, it's crazy. It's like, okay, I get it. Like, have at it, you know, whatever. Um, but when you threaten me, that's like, one, even if somebody did post, say it was, it was a, like, there's no right to go threaten somebody. And I would say that probably... You know, majority of the people that are getting on social media and sending me threatening messages, they wouldn't say that shit in front of me. You know, they they get a little uh, excitement on the keyboard and stuff like that. There was a great meme I saw the other day. It was it was like a line of people. It I said saw it. trolls, trolls lining up to, to round the fighter, and then it was yeah. an empty parking lot. You know, get, you know to get into the MMA gym to meet the fighter. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, it, it, I, I mean, I've talked to so many fighters about this where it's just they'll sit there and say, I'm there are times where you're just amazed what gets said to you, like, particularly after crazy. fights, you know, where you put your heart and soul into training yeah. for a fight, it doesn't go the way you want, and then 
you pop open your IG or or your Twitter account right. and you're just floored you know, by what's said. It's unfortunate that's how it is, but you know that's I guess it it comes with the entertainment. You know, it comes with the job. People are always going to be judging you and watching everything you do. Um, that's a part of being in the spotlight, I guess, you know, and the way you uh, manage that and uh, is, you know, is huge as far as it, you can't let anything get to you. Um, yeah. Well, of course, right. you got the fight, got the fight next week. We look forward to see it. Darren, man, as always, appreciate the time. Of course, let everyone know where they can find you on social media and, uh, and of course, yeah, so uh, sponsors. Right now, my Instagram is on private, right? Because, dude, so out of all my knockouts and all the, like all this great stuff that I've ever done, I've never had so many people send me a friend request <laughs> over just so they can like talk shit to me, right? So I guess you can find me on Instagram at Darren Crookshank. Twitter is Crookshank155. And my Facebook's Darren Crookshank. So check it out. You want to hate speech on me? Hit me up. I probably won't respond. But um, yeah. <laughs> 